There's one more terrestrial biome. Or, it's not really a biome. It, but the, the polar regions uh, don't really fit into a major biome. So I'm just going to mention them now before we move into aquatic ecosystems. They're not easily de defined in terms of typical plant and animal communities. Polar regions include the polar ice caps, but they also include the very high elevations of mountain ranges. Mountain ranges exist on all continents and in many biomes. On mountains, the conditions vary with elevation. From valley to summit, temperature precipitation, exposure to wind, and soil types all change, and so do organisms. If you were to climb the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, heading west from Denver, for example, you'd begin in a grassland. You then pass through pine woodland and then a forest of spruce and other conifers. Thickets of aspen and willow trees grow along stream beds and valleys. Higher up, soils are thin, strong winds buffet open fields of wildflowers and stunted vegetation resembling tundra. You'll eventually flat find glaciers and peaks of many ranges. The polar regions border the tundra and are cold year-round. Some algae grow on snow and ice, but plants are few, even fewer than in the tundra. Where rocks and ground are exposed to seasonally, mosses and lichens may grow. Marine mammals, insects, and mites are typical. In the north, where polar bears live, the Arctic Ocean is covered with sea ice, although more and more ice is melting each summer. In the south, the continent of Antarctica, inhabited by several species of penguins, is covered by ice nearly five kilometers thick in places. Like organisms living on land, underwater organisms are affected by external environmental factors. Aquatic organisms are affected primarily by the water's depth, temperature, flow rate, and concentration of dissolved nutrients. Water depth influences aquatic life because sunlight penetrates only a relatively short distance through the water. The sunlit region near the surface in which photosynthesis can occur is known as the photic zone. It's a big, important term, the photic zone. The photic zone may be as deep as 200 meters in tropical seas, but may just be a few meters deep or less in rivers and swamps. Photosynthetic algae called phytoplankton live in the photic zone. These are incredibly important organisms, phytoplankton. They make our oxygen. Zooplankton, tiny free-floating animals, eat the phytoplankton. This is the first step in many aquatic food webs. Below the photic zone is the dark aphotic zone, where photosynthesis cannot occur. Many aquatic organisms live on or in rocks and sediments on the bottoms of lakes, streams, and oceans. These organisms are called the benthos, and their, habit, their habitat is the benthic. Where water is shallow enough for the benthos to be within the photic zone, algae and rooted aquatic plants can grow. When the benthic zone is below the photic zone, chemosynthetic autotrophs are the only primary producers. These are uh, organisms that, that, that manufacture their own food without light they live in the dark. Does this picture show fish in the photic zone or the aphotic zone? Well, clearly they're in the photic zone. You can see plenty of light in the surface of the water. Aquatic habitats like terrestrial habitats are warmer near the equator and colder near the poles. Temperature in aquatic habitats also varies with depth. The deepest parts of lakes and oceans are often colder than surface waters. Currents in lakes and oceans can dramatically affect water temperature because they can carry water that is significantly warmer or cooler than would be typical for any given latitude, depth, or distance from shore. Organisms need nutrients such as oxygen, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus to live. The type and availability of these dissolved substances vary within and between bodies of water, greatly affecting the types of organisms that can survive there. 